Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video after taking a, uh, nice rest over Labor Day weekend, just doing as much nothing as I can, besides just also <laughs> grinding for this banner. Today's video, what are we gonna be talking about? We're gonna be talking about, obviously, the next upcoming summon, which would be Summon 3. It says 2 here, but technically the, this man banner was number 2. But I guess Summoning 2 is what it's called, which is silly. But anyway, Summoning 2 banner, which is the banner basically everyone has been waiting for, including me, since this is, uh, since the event started, basically. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can feel free to leave a like. I'm getting pretty close to 3,000 subscribers, so if I could reach that before the end of 2023, I think that'd be pretty cool. So think about it <laughs> when you're looking, the, whether you're thinking you should subscribe to me or not. It would be pretty sweet and sick to reach 3,000. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So, this banner, it features Kama, and it also features two units that are not Kama, which is Kindness Rider and... Oh man, someone literally put in the comments how to say her name. Sai? Say? say? Oh, I'm sorry. I, li I remember reading it and said I'll remember it in a week from now, and then I completely forgot. Feel free to put it down again! <laughs> but let's go with Sai. Um... And there are the three units that are going to be on this banner, along with the female craft essences and the male craft essences. So if you are like most people and did not summon for the man banner, this is your chance to get Treasure of the Caribbean, Golden Path, and at the street and at the street corner of the Decorating Sea. Though I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay, let's go into the units themselves. We'll save Kama for last, and we'll go with Kindness Rider first. Kindness is a writer um yes is a writer is one quick two arts two buster and the first skill is beach crisis poseidon ex increases party's attack for three turns increases the crit damage of male or unknown gender allies for three turns which is uh yeah i believe that is what their trait is is unknown gender if i remember right feminine looking yeah, that makes about sense. I remember getting into an argument about that once in the comments. But anyway, the attack up is 20% of level 10, and the buff to male or unknown gender crit damage is 30%. It is a cooldown of 7, 6, and 5. Second skill, Sea King Style B. Sea King, Sea King. Increases own arts performance for 3 turns, increases own buster performance for 3 turns, gains crit stars. Uh, arts is 30% uh, buster is 30% enough stars are 15 and the cooldown is of six and Third skill is the summertime combat B plus grant self the gut status for one time three turns Grants kit stars every turn for three turns increases crit or absorption on the water slide battlefield and Then you also get some stars if you're on there too for three turns uh, the revive is 3000 the star regen is 10 the water side absorption is 500 percent and the star regen is 10 and the cooldown is of six passive skills are writing ex and the sea god's essence b third skill is an anti-lancer attack damage aptitude and our noble phantasm is a b plus anti-unit uh, three hit increase own mp damage by 20 percent for three turns activates first Increases on attack by 20% on waterside battlefield for 3 turns, activates first, and deals damage to one enemy. Uh, the MP damage is 600% at level 1, and at level 5 it is 1000, and the overcharge effect is an increase against crit damage for 3 turns. The overcharge at level 1 is 50% crit damage, which is pretty nice, and then all the way at the final level it is 100% if you can get it there. And that lasts for 3 turns. Alright, and that's Kindness. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm saying Kindness wrong as well, but it's okay. I think. Anyway, uh, I can't wait to get them, to be honest. I really like Kainus, and I'm very sad that I was not able to get them <laughs> when they first came around, because there was just no way for me to justify summoning for them. It made me very sad, so I will gladly get this unit here. In terms of what the unit actually does, I'm not the biggest fan of any unit that really is super beholden to like stuff like this, like a waterside battlefield, unless they themselves are bringing the waterside battlefield to them. 
But thankfully, uh, Kindness' one is only really to this third skill and to the NP, and it's not like fully built around the kit. At least it doesn't seem that bad to me. I think it's a very interesting kind of skill here as well, which is the crit damage up to male or unknown gender allies. I always like it when there's like very weird specific synergies within a, a skill set, because I think that at least makes it so, it makes team building a little bit more fun when you're like, okay, this is the specific team I want to make. And funny enough, it does call back to a lot of the early um, summer units because a lot of the early summer units had a lot of attack, like a lot of their skills buffed male units, um, and they eventually stopped doing that when they realized we don't release that many male units, <laughs> so we're just gonna stop doing that. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to see this back. In terms of being able to uh, loop with Vich. You do got five cooldown of six and a cooldown of six, but no MP gauge. That's kind of a bummer, uh, big time bummer. And because they are single target, um, deals damage to one enemy. I mean, if you get the two arts in there, you could probably do it. Hmm, I don't know. But but since I am gonna be going for comma, I expect uh, Canis to have a whole bunch of damage to them. Hopefully, if I can get a bunch. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Because the last time I said that, I thought I would be getting a lot more, and all I got was MP3 of uh, Anastasia. So, you know what? Hopefully I get them, is my uh, <laughs> my general hope. But yeah, that's them. I remember them... I remember there being like a lot of anger from the JP side of the game, because there always is when it comes to this specific server. Like, there, there's always some form of beef started with them. It's very silly, though. I remember the, uh, the the Japanese uh, side thought that Kainus was technically the first male summer um, unit, and then they got really, really weird about it, because they were like, well, that's not fair. You basically picked someone who is a man in a female body with a female female looking body, and that's not fair. Because we wanted actual males. Because <laughs> it's been a, a thing over in JP. They really want an actual summer male unit. And I feel like at this point every year they kind of wish for it. And it just never happened. I feel like it, it ended up being just a unfair like attack on, on them. To be 100% real with you. But I find it was a silly story. And there we go. And I don't think many people bring that up now. Because they realize that the Fago devs will never actually release a male summer unit at all. <laughs> the closest you get is unknown gender so anyway let's move on and we'll go to Sai uh, we'll go to Sai over here who is a berserker Sai is a limited servant uh, berserker uh, she has one quick one arts and three buster uh, big bust in damage as you can see here first skill summer street a increases on attack for three turns increases on crit damage for three turns charges on NP gauge 20%, attack up is 30%, crit damage up is 30%, and the um, NP up is 20% at level 10, cooldown of 6. Second skill is a Night Pool Slider A, grants self-evasion for 2 attacks 3 turns, increase on a critical damage for 1 turn, increase on crit star absorption for 1 turn, uh, crit damage up is 100%, and the star absorption is 5000, uh, cooldown is of 6. Uh, third skill is the Elegant Summer Sweets A, recovers one ally's HP, grants them the burn, debuff immunity for three turns, and then gains crit stars. Uh, the heal is 3,000, the crit uh, stars you get are 25, and the cooldown is a 5. And the passive skills, she has Madness Enhancement D, Independent Action, Self-Centered D, and One Vehicle's Teaching, which is, <laughs> which is increases zone charm debuff resistance by 100%. That's a silly thing to have. Third skill is an anti-ruler anti critical attack chance resistance. And her noble phantasm, obviously because she has three busters, she is a quick servant. So, her <laughs> quick AoE is an increase in own damage against servants enemies with a lawful alignment by 50% for one turn, activates first. Increase on damage against shadow servant enemies by 50% for one turn, activates first, and then deals damage to one enemy. Oh, it's not an AoE, it's a single target, my bad. My bad on that one. Uh, MP, I was thinking of the other side. Uh, MP level 1 is um, uh, 12,000, and at level 5 it is 2,000, and then you have an increase against damage against the main attribute for one turn, activates first, and the bonus damage is 50%, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's 100%. And yeah, bonus against the man. Any of these servants, basically you get a bonus damage against them. <laughs> 
Uh, very interesting unit. Like I said, it's really weird to be three buster, one quick, one arts, and then your NP is a single target quick. That makes it feel like, hey, even with seven hits, which is pretty good for a quick NP, without the actual NP gain and anything else to kind of follow up with it, I feel like you would, she would kind of fall really, really short of what you would expect. Um, unless you were specifically fighting against someone of the lawful alignment, or a shadow servant, or both at the same time, and was also a man. Basically, if you are fighting against someone who is all three of these, she's going to completely open up house against them, dealing a bonus 150% damage. But if you're not, then it's a little bit weird, because after she does her NP, she does have ways to get NP gain, but again, you have to remember that if you're using her with uh, Scotty, it's a little bit weird, and I guess you could wait until Ruler Scotty to see if that's a little bit different, but for right now, it feels like she's a little bit weird. It feels like they built a Buster Servant and then said, actually, she's quick. That's a little bit weird, but it's okay because she looks really nice. This is another fantastic art done by them. I absolutely love um, Sai, so I'm obviously going to be hoping, hoping against all hope that I'll be able to get her in this one and hopefully get her at some decent MP level so she can just get some more damage from this as well because she is going to be single target, so the more damage, the better. And yeah, I think that's a... Uh, that's basically it for her. If you have anything else specific to say, because I would love to hear what other people think about her, but um, other than I'm 100% getting her and figuring out how to use her the second I get her, there's not much else I can say, because <laughs> it looks like she's pretty basic and also a little bit built weirdly, but maybe there's something I'm not 100% sure. Maybe the people who want to play on JP know just a little bit more than me, which usually they do. Now let's go to the last one, which is the, the reason for the season, the reason most people I've been saving, the reason I've been asked multiple times, Woki, when is Kama coming out? It is Kama Adventure. It is a summer servant uh, for this year and the big one at that. Kama is a two quick, two arts, one buster, and when on stage one, she is considered a child servant, and on stage two to three, she is a levitating servant and no longer a child. First skill is the Makara Floating A, increases own arts performance for three turns, grants self evasion for two attacks, three turns, 30% arts, and a cooldown of six. Second skill is the Hollow Demon EX, increases own damage for three turns, and then chance to charm all enemies for one turn. The MP damage is 20%, and the charm chance is 100%. Her third skill is Mara in the Midsummer CEX, um, charges on MP gauge, grants self on attack activated debuff for three turns, inflict heartfelt blaze debuff for three turns to enemies with normal attacking, increase on damage against enemies with the heartfelt blaze status by 10% uh, N for three turns, heartfelt blaze stack count is max 10, and the MP up is 50% and this is a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are, hold on to your butts, Magic Resistance A, Writing A, Avenger B, Oblivion Correction B, Self Replenishment Magic A, Independent Manifestation E, Demon King's Essence, question mark, B. Uh, her third skill is an anti-lancer attack damage aptitude, because she just really does not like uh, her body at all. Um, and our noble phantasm is the Kama uh, Rupastra, the climaxing love is passion in summer. It's an arts four hit, deals damage to all enemies, reduces their defense by 20% for three turns. The damage is 450% at level one, and if you get her all the way to MP5, it's 750%. And she deals extra damage against enemies with the charm status. Uh, the charm extra damage is 150% if you can get it on there. If you get her all the way to charge level five, it is 200%, and that is Kama Avenger. Uh, Kama Avenger, it looks, based off of just skills alone, it's like, oh, that's a pretty basic kit. I think this is probably where a vast majority of the Inflict Heartfelt Blaze debuff for 300 enemies when normal. Actually, no, not even because you're not going to be normal attacking that much when you're looping. But the point is, that I'm about to say, is that Kama can actually deal a lot of damage, and she's going to be right up there for the best in terms of arts looping and it's right neck and neck with space ishtar i've seen a lot of charts of people trying to and it's caused a lot of debates of people trying to say which one's better space ishtar or kama trying to decide between the two and they're really close to neck and neck with certain things like damage and actual np gain 
being a factor between the two of people going like, well, this one does more damage, this one gives you more NP, so this is what... Blah, 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 blah. They look at all those factors and stuff, and then they all... And then it all ends up not mattering, because in a year, Summer Buki comes out and is better than both of them. <laughs> so, with that said, if you're looking for a fantastic art slooper, look no further than Summer Kama, because Summer Kama is going to be there for you 100%. She is still very good, even with Summer Buki being the absolute best. That doesn't mean that you can... St that doesn't mean if there's a new best one that you have to immediately stop using it. All it means is that if they're NP level 10, it means, hey, maybe you can go use a new unit if anything else. But if you really do like the unit, then you can keep using them. And when the unit is actually legitimately good, like it is with Summer Kama, then you can use her for as long as you like. You can use her until she's Bond 15. It's super easy for you because your unit is good. It has a very clear function of how she's good as well. And even if you were to use her in other things, like there are enemies that can be uh, hit by charm. There are some certain bosses, like I've talked about before, with charm locking. And this ability here to just hit them with a bonus 150% damage is really funny. Um, even if this only lasts for a single turn. Not even a single turn, it only lasts for this Noble Phantasm. And it is an AoE <laughs> Noble Phantasm at that. So you're not going to be doing that much crazy damage unless you're MP5, but still. Uh, Summer Kama is absolutely... 100%. If you're going to summon on any unit in this, it would probably be between her and Doman. And if you're someone who does not care about Doman, then obviously Summer Kama is the one to get. It's the one most people are going for. Even if she was bad, she would still be the one most people are going for because it's Kama. And there you go. And it's a redrop servant. <laughs> There's really not uh, much more I have to say about that. She's obviously extremely good. She's obviously extremely loved and I wish you guys the best of luck because when I dropped the last video when I was talking about the other units, the first thing I got was I can't wait for summer comma. Damn, you can't even... <laughs> People are not patient about waiting for this unit. It's very clear this is the one of the summer units that everyone wants outside of the dedicated Doman fans who are out here waiting for Doman. But that's the banner that's coming up. It should be uh, out later today when I release this. And if I got that wrong, then it's going to be out the day after. But it should be, by my calculations, uh, the day roll period that is happening now, which is for me Wednesday. Um, and if I'm wrong about that, then it's Thursday. Because the event started technically on the 31st, but maintenance started on the 30th. So typically it releases on the day of the maintenance, um, which would be the 30th. And if I'm wrong... Then I'll have to make another video for tomorrow, to be honest. Because I was planning that summon video to be the video that I make. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy summoning. And until next time, goodbye. Peace.